officially recording. And I am going to now go into the Remarkist app so that I can start the time code there. And those of you who are regulars here know what's coming next. Those of you who are new, we're all going to hit the play button on our episode at the same time on the count of three. You ready? One, two, three. Oh, and just starting on some lalas, just immediate lalas. Gotta love them, though. Back from Europe. Sorry you missed Europe, John. Kind of a bummer. That would have been a cool little, little thing to start on. The clothes that Lauren is wearing in this episode right now, is actually from her own wardrobe. That's funny. I love that Babette knows around the kitchen in their house um, as if it were her own. I don't know how many rich relationships have that. <laughs> Babette has the type of voice where you could hear her from across a football field. My mother also has that same voice. Not that same kind of voice, but a voice that carries. Man, I know that that feeling of international travel and finally arriving back. Or arriving there. Oh, don't tell me it's bad. I have 23 hours of travel coming up. Just one regular, like, six-hour flight gets me, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm pretty good at jet lag. I have a good strategy. I went to England about three years ago. That jet lag that first day was intense because we got – we left here at, like, nighttime and got there in the morning and so we had a whole full day ahead of us when we landed in London that was fun Bazzi and I did long distance for five years so I traveled 
she both of us traveled back and forth of like several times per year um and and i developed a pretty good strategy i just stay up the entire day before and i i align it so that i will be sleeping and wake up um wake up there the morning in the morning i cannot for the life of me sleep on a plane my ears are so sensitive they keep me awake It's not really about the when you it's 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 when you sleep. If you're going to arrive in the afternoon or in the evening, you cannot sleep on the plane. The opposite. If you're going to arrive I in the morning, sleep you have on the to. Plane. Uh, you, see you see that you see you see supervising producer yes. Chris Long. That that was his first year as that like director's producer. I don't miss the days when you had to pay for like long distance phone calls. FYI, Canada, it's still happening. Oh, that's so sad. Just hop on Clubhouse. Or FaceTime or Zoom. There's so many options these days. Can you just adopt me so I could be a Canadian? I work for a company in Germany and all we ever do is WhatsApp so we don't have to pay for texting. I have this feeling that we're not going to get Yale this episode. It is funny that that's a corporate like incentive. Just give them tote bags. They'll spend seventy five dollars worth of money. Like tote bags cost literally nothing. That's funny. I don't know. That makes sense. The look of this, it feels a little more filmy, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. I thought that about the background of the car when they were crossing the street. Same and all the greenery. I think it's the soft focus in the background. Okay, so this is why I thought the soda shop wasn't until season four, because technically it wasn't. No, Fran's funeral kind of put a stop to it. I loved Mary Poppins. I don't think I ever finished that movie as a child. Wax lips are bullshit, though. Could we all agree? Wax lips are bullshit. Never had them. 
I love those. Yeah, shows. I have no idea what they are. I love yeah, them. They're fun. They taste ter- terrible, but they were fun to play with. I think it's for like chewing on or something. Or what about the ones that had like soda, like they were supposed to be like little soda bottles or uh, so I I actually yeah. broke. <laughs> Across the street from me, there's um, an old-fashioned uh, ice cream shop like that with the candies and stuff like that, and I, it's, I, my kids adore it in there. The background is so soft. It's so much softer than in previous seasons. That's what gives it this, like, what? much more filmic look. What year did it switch so from WB to CW? When did that happen? I think that might be this year. Because that's what I'm thinking is why. It's a different season. We're used to seeing a lot of wintry and fall stuff, so it's nice and green. No, it's not that. It's not just that. It's also the the quality of the lens. The lens lens focus is just a little different. I find them not getting Luke a gift not very believable. Same. I would think he'd be first on their list. I love... And I don't know. They actually, you know, talk about how they have uh, biscotti for the whole, you know, rest of the week. Why didn't they just give him that? He likes, you know, he's a diner. He's food. They could have given him a few pieces of that. They said they could never find anything good enough for him is why. Lou's kind of a health nut. I mean, yeah, you think he would want Biscotti? Anytime you have that much expectations, it's not going to go well. So, I mean, I think it was appropriate they did not have it and they made it happen. Like, it's cute. Jam. It's fun. We are all here just for the moment. My husband and I were the flip of this. He knew and I didn't. Really? That's interesting. John, do you know what this baby is going to be? Because if you don't, yes. Like, if you don't know it, I want to hear what you think. Sorry, I only half heard that because I was trying to focus on the scene. Um, the what, what was the question again? I'm saying if you don't know what the gender is, yes. Like right now, quick, if you don't know. Oh boy. I have no idea. I I, I don't remember. I don't think it's twins. So miss it. You're about to find out. Ah, I was right. Good guess. I really didn't know. I, I truly, truly didn't know. Yeah, I had a 50-50 shot. It really was just a 50-50. <laughs> Maybe when Jackson was telling us, oh boy, about 500 times in that one episode, gave it away. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. You think that that's what they were doing? I don't know. Probably not. I always loved that Lorelai never pressured. Like, literally, she accepted it. It is what it is. And uh, I always appreciate that kind of acceptance. Shelly, you need to make some for me. Jam, I'm, I just bought, I just went and picked more strawberries yesterday. I'm probably going to make another batch. Send me your address. 
<laughs> what is this we're getting? <laughs> strawberry jam. I also make strawberry rhubarb. I make all kinds of jams. I, I do. I can anything. I love. Oh strawberry. yum! Strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> strawberry rhubarb is the best. She the pie that she made looks incredible too. I gotta make another one of those too. Jam so and Should I be correcting her French? Because that's not what it says. What was it that she said? It's voulez, she said, voulez-vous, c'est savez-vous. Ah. She made it. Wait, might means have just what? Been sort of like, what did To say, do you know how to tie your shoes? It should be savez-vous, not voulez-vous. Voulez-vous is do you want to. Mary, I'm a newcomer, so I'm probably a problem more than anything. But when you explain stuff like that, it's so wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Really? <laughs> totally buying it. Too much. Way too much, just her style. That's a lie, though. They didn't try to get him anything. No, she said that they tried and they couldn't find anything that was good enough. Yeah, but didn't they sort of seem surprised, like, kind of like, oh, no, we forgot. Yeah, they were going to buy him a matador outfit, it, it, everything that they, I think. Oh, they right. They tried do. all of these different things, and then eventually yeah. they just forgot. Yep. He couldn't get away from her fast enough. <laughs> that picture. Sean's hair is like a whole character in this season. That guy on the end there kind of looks like Brad. I love all the innuendo, what he just said. <laughs> I was just thinking that too, Wendy. <laughs> Perfect. All you have to do is say the line, dirty. Hey, John, Mike Gandolfi is on the couch, or the beanbag, I mean. 
Who? Hi, Mike. We Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. We know you love to lurk. Who? Mike. Andrew. Andrew. He played he Andrew. Andrew. Oh, okay. You can have my spot if you want to swap, by the way. Who said that? Jen. Jen. I'm going to invite him up, and, and if he accepts, then I'll drop you down. Cool. I didn't mean to kick anyone out. I'm sorry about that. I was just, as always, lurking, and I... Sure, I haven't seen this episode, and I just want to enjoy all your guys' antics because I'm going to be there. Do it. We want you here. We want you here. Okay. I'll be here next week on a show I actually know, an episode I know something about. Yay. Love it. Now, uh, nice to meet you, Mike. Hi. Hi. Hi, Mike. Hi, everyone I haven't met before. Hello. Hello. And hey. what about the ones you have met before? Hi again to you also. <laughs> Uh, uh, I didn't realize. I'm, am I supposed to keep keep rambling? I I, I didn't mean to. I, I have no reason to hog the on the microphone. I swear. No, we just uh, we just chat whenever something comes to mind while we're watching. I should actually put the show on then too, shouldn't I? Oh, you don't have it on. <laughs> I just I was just catching up, so I'm 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 actually speeding through to get to where you guys are. Well, we're currently at time code 21 minutes and 18 seconds. I'd never say this, but copy that. And I'm going to actually mute you. Uh, your your mute button is in the lower right. So when we don't speak, we, we keep our mute buttons on. Oh, so we might get some Yale in this episode. I can't believe it's not butter. The tone of it, I mean, I'm telling you, I feel like the tone or the, and the style just, it just feels a little different this season. Um, not a bad thing, actually kind of a good thing. I, I, I think I prefer it, to be honest. More um, grown last, up? Yeah, last season felt a little kind of network television glossy. And this feels way a little, just a, it feels a little more, a little more <laughs> like indie film-ish. You can definitely yeah. tell Laura, Laura, um, Alexis is looking more her age now because she's probably, what, like 21 right now in this season? I think it is that this is the year it switched over from the WB to the CW. I think that's part of it. Um, no, that didn't happen until season seven. Oh, Really? I thought it was earlier than that, but maybe not. No. They're tough. still on the WB right now. Oh, yeah, that was 2006. 
I'm weird and picky about my pens too. Same. I'm not picky, but I love pens. Yeah, I'm an I'm obsessed. I know I was down the stationary aisle by myself because I can't be trusted not to buy everything. Pilot pins are my favorite. People love Taylor. Man, but this kind of stuff is just insufferable. Yeah. This is why I don't like him very much. Yeah, he's one of my least favorite. I'm not a fan of Taylor. I mean, he helps the story make it fun. Otherwise, not so much. He's one of my favorites. He is one of your favorites? He is. He's so yeah. obnoxious. And no, I mean, he's so obnoxious. That he's He's so... Fun is obnoxious. Wow, the hair, the hair. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I mean. And the character, like we should just call Kirk and Kirk's hair. Is this Kirk's only like reoccurring job that he had like over and over again? No, he had a couple. Yeah, he's good at this one. Do you notice how the um, cash register is on the other side of the store now too? Yep. John, did you hear that Taylor said there's going to be a skydiver for the children? Yeah. Oh, no, there's the register. That must have just been a counter. Spoke too soon. Whoops. I always wanted her t-shirt, but I couldn't find it anywhere to go with my graphic t-shirt collection. Did they not get Kirk a gift? Uh, no gift for Kirk. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I love fake jam. So that's that's why you wanted to make sure that I heard that line. Twenty bucks. Yep, one hundred percent. I was like, "Did you hear? Did you hear?" <laughs> I'm bummed that she didn't get that they didn't get him a gift. I feel like he'd be the first one they would think about getting a gift for. I agree. They forgot their most important people. Sad. They remembered Andrew. I gotta say that, like, I actually really love Lorelai's, like, outfit and hair in this particular scene. Yeah, Lorelai's full style here in this episode is great. The very first dinner, and she's trying to get her to skip it. I know. I don't like that. Yeah, me neither. Mm. Mm. Not into that. He's so mean. He's horrible. But he is he <laughs> is fun to hate. Oh yeah. Absolutely.
I love Rory's outfit. Just a little Eiffel Tower model? Yeah. Why doesn't she just tell him that she screwed up the date? I know that I keep thinking. So I don't think Emily would have liked right. that either. Are those like little Eiffel Tower models? Are they like a special thing? Because I mean, that looks like something you like the kind of thing you'd get like at a souvenir store. Yeah, it's probably very expensive though. They have them all around the Eiffel Tower, just like on picnic tables. People are selling them in booths. They're everywhere. Are they like? I mean, are they kind of? I don't think I saw more. Hours. Are they special? They kind of seem like they would be like a, I think it's like a five dollar, like a little five dollar nothing. It's very yeah, trinket. No, it's just I, I would think that hers with glow, with gold and that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like real gold leaf and stuff used on that. Still ten more minutes. We gotta get some Yale. I want some Yale. Because that would have been smart. Well, now she's just being petty. Yeah, she needs a trap worry.
I could never. I'd be like, no, I have to leave. I'm not staying. Yeah, she's she been taping broken up. She's been taping this in '78. She didn't learn how to use a DVD player. Ooh. I didn't even know she owned a TV. I didn't know they had VCRs in '78. Broke up. Mm. And she said no. (laughs) This is good. <laughs> but there's more. <laughs> Saw that comment. Boom. Seriously, it's exhausting. <laughs> oh Ladies and God. gentlemen, the shortest. Marriage since Kim Kardashian and Chris got married. Brittany had a pretty short Yeah, Brittany in Vegas was only like what, 72 hours? 52 hours? 55. And VCRs came out in 77. Poor Kirk. I (laughs) just want to catch me off guard every time. I was I was born in eighty, so but we always had one as far as I can remember. But I didn't I didn't I don't know that we had them before eighty. I had one for all the new dresses. I definitely want to. Gosh, I definitely want to talk about this in in post show, just like the dynamic of this new. Friday night dinnery type thing. In a room we've never seen before. I was just thinking that.
So it's like one room we never get to see. I like that they stayed. And Emily just went to sleep. She's sleeping on the side chair there. See her. Ah, there we go. There we go. Oh, sorry, I wasn't looking. <laughs> I was like, I, was, I didn't see it. <laughs> That's funny though. <laughs> Okay, so I always understood that Scotty's supposed to be eaten with coffee. I didn't know people just ate it like that. Same. Uh, I, think, I think most people eat it with a coffee. I, I, don't know that's a coffee. I have it with tea. Scotty, oh, you didn't get Yale. That's oh something else I I'm, make. I'm like, I'm legitimately <laughs> I make a lot of biscotti. I'm, I'm, I'm legit annoyed by that. I really wanted Yale. But I felt like it was tomorrow. Is the first I, day I felt like I was being teased the whole time. I thought we were going to enter that world. And, but did you, know. you did you look at the title for tomorrow? I didn't. I mean, I I did, but I don't remember what it is. My memory is well, not that good these days. It's um, literally called. I'm gonna the wait. Lord hold on, I hold on, folks. Day. Hold on, folks. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the couch because we've got some folks who want to join us. Okay, couch is open. Please come on up. Join us for a lively discussion about this episode. Um, Woohoo! Woohoo! What's cool about at the end of the episode when Lorelai's like, tomorrow, and it's really funny, and I think they did that because of that. Tomorrow in their world is the first day of Yale, and tomorrow in our world, we're watching it. I don't know. It's cool. Actually, tomorrow in their world should be saturday yeah th that's what that it, it is what it is right. the orientation that's on saturday that that's that's what they said that's what it said in the in the in the letter really people mm -hmm. do that on the weekend yeah orientation for universities can be on the weekend interesting on like a saturday so yeah, because it would, on yeah because then classes would officially start on monday you're not going to have the orientation on a day when they would be going to classes you would have it on a day when like like I, I like I, I want to say that my orientation was on a weekend, for yeah, sure. Yeah, mine was too. Mine was too. And then my first class was eight a.m. on a Monday. I was dumb. I was a dumb freshman. Oh, John, can I say sure something so not, not related to the show? <laughs> uh, yes, but keep it. Try and keep it short so we have some time to talk about. The show. Oh, it's only a minute. So I've been playing my video game and watching at the same time because I wanted to get myself back to where I am. I'm back to where I am a little bit further with about 40,000 more coins than where I was before I got stuck. Well, 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 congratulations. Thank you. That is that. Um, all right. So where do we want to, uh, where do we want to start here? Um, there, there are a few things. I, I'm, I'm of course still reeling by the fact that I didn't get Yale. Um, so I, I feel like I need, I need to take, I need to take a, a breather and 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 uh get over that um we've got the the the, the, the luke and the luke and lorelei scene it's interesting now now that this has been brought up this whole um thing about homophobia and gay jokes i'm i'm sort of hearing it now. <laughs> like I, I i didn't realize that until it was pointed out it's interesting what about Luke pretending to to move the boxes around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was funny. Um, I'm I, I mean, the fact that they didn't get Kirk a gift that's something that kind of bothers me. Uh, yeah, and then this whole this whole thing with 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 Emily and and Lorelai. I'd like to I'd like to dissect that a bit. Does anybody have any thoughts? What are we on, dissecting? On I wish Rory would have just messed up and said, you know, like I messed up the schedule. Mom's running errands for me because I actually have to be at Yale tomorrow. 
Yeah, I agree with that. And there would be all the drama. I didn't like how um, Emily was like giving Lorelai such a hard time about not coming because when she did try to come in the previous episode, she was like, oh, no, we're not having dinner. You know, and Lorelai was like, um, you have dinner every night at seven. So I feel like she was unfair with her at that point. I don't think she tried to come, though. She was picking up Rory, and she just happened to be there at that time. I, I still think there should be phone calls. I still think if Lorelai is the one going to Emily's house or not going, I think just to kind of keep the peace and to kind of have that open line of communication, just say, hey, I can't come. We just realized we're a week short, and she's leaving tomorrow. I got stuff to do, but I'll see you next week. But I know that's asking too much. Yeah. Well, there'd be no drama if that was the case. Right? Mike, did you end up catching up to us? Were you able to watch with us? Yes, I was all caught up, except it turned out it was always a couple seconds behind. So I hear you guys laugh about the, the Dan or, or the Jimmy Carter thing or any reference you guys made. And I'm like, I know what's going to happen now. There's going to be a Jimmy Carter reference or a Patty <laughs> Hearst reference. <laughs> You didn't do any of those, but I knew what was coming, and I was just assumed. I pretend you guys have made a reference of it, so it made it actually really fun to be a couple of seconds behind. Did uh, I, did I frighten you? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, that's not. I just, I just was. Uh, it's just sort of. Um, it was really a panic of having been a comic thing that. To, to hear a complete silence was a uh, was frightening, but I'm really okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. How did you feel about um Luke marrying Nicole, John? Um. I mean, I didn't see that coming. That was. I loved your reaction. reaction. Yay! A finally a surprise. Definitely didn't see that coming. Uh, that was fun. I mean, you know, I kind of saw where it was going about halfway through, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it coming that, that, that they had gotten married. I assumed that, I assumed that it was going to be that, that he asked her to marry her, that he, he asked her to marry him and she said no. That was sort of the, that, that's sort of the obvious, like, you know, what, what you're, what you're kind of a, expected to 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 think from that um i mean it makes sense i feel like they ne they weren't really right for each other i always liked that character the nicole character i thought i thought that she was cool but i i could see them just not meshing i mean they did i mean what you know in the in the little bit that we saw them interacting you know they they were always kind of a little off so yeah, I mean, do you think that's the last we're gonna see anything? Oh, good question. Um, oof. I mean, now that you say it, I'm like, she's a lawyer. They're getting a divorce. Uh, I mean, who knows? I mean, that could be crazy. What What happens if she? Start like just what if she starts to do some like some lawyer type stuff and divorce and tries to like get some you know get things from him? I I mean I don't know like <laughs> now now that you've said it you have my wheels turning. Well, what you if know? she gets the diner and the divorce? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, what if she tries to like to to, div to divide like divide their divide their wealth or something like that and 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 the diner? I, I don't know that. I didn't think of it until you said it, but now that you said it, I'm like, oh, that's right. She's a lawyer and they're getting divorced. And that could be very interesting conflict. Sabrina is flashing at the bottom, John. Sabrina? I've been flashing too. Uh, my, my comment is, what do you think about Luke having his dream where Lorelai told him not to get engaged and then he went and got engaged anyways? Wait. Ooh, that's good. Um, he went yesterday, he got married. Yeah, he won up the. He took it way further than his dream. He's that provocateur. I don't know how to respond to that. I mean, that's 
that's just very interesting. I don't know. I don't know how to read into it other than maybe like, maybe he's, because he's definitely in love with Lorelai. I mean, it's very clear that he's in love with Lorelai. So why would he do that? And he had to think about it before that he actually proposed on the boat. Because no, that, no, that I don't, reality. that I don't know if I totally buy. Like, I no, think I don't that, think he- yeah, I think it's very possible that they were drunk and that they were like, they were just having a good time and all that. Then it just like, it just sort of spilled out. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. And then suddenly they're there. And, like, and the next thing you know, they're married and they're like, oh, wait a second. I mean, he said by the time they got off the boat, like they were separated already, you know, and now they're going through the divorce. So uh, I don't know. What do, what do others think about that? Why would he do that given that he's, clearly in love with somebody else. Um, Thank you. Um, so kind of inching a little bit back because I wanted to say something and then we kind of got on this one. But when Luke was like saying like, we got engaged and then um, Lorelai had to kind of like take a second to figure on um, to process everything that he said. And then like the moment where she was like, oh my gosh, she's pregnant, you finally reproduced, I think, when I was about 10, is when this episode, I believe, came out, and I was like, I mean, obviously, I knew everything about that, but I thought it was really funny, and what was really funny is that my mother didn't know that I understood what she was talking about, and which made it even more funnier, and yeah, I, I, I thought it was funny, but I honestly thought, like, Luke would have said yes, and that would have put a different spin on this show, on the season um but I feel like I don't know like they were probably drunk yes and just thought like hey like what the hell let's just get married type thing and then they realized like how stupid and it's like okay this isn't us we're just like high on cruise ship fun and things like that so and plus I don't think Luke would in real life be that restless and that spontaneous and just up and get married because obviously we know that he's in love with Lorelai and I don't think he would in any other um and just get married just to get married it just seems like Luke was pro- was just caught up in like the sea air and the coal and just being alone with her and things like that Tiffany was flashing Tiffany, your output? Yeah, I think that it was probably easier for him to do, um, to like propose to her because Lorelai wasn't around. And I was actually going to say that I'm kind of glad that Lorelai wasn't around for like the divorce because I think it would have complicated things where someone would have blamed her for it or maybe he would have stayed married to Nicole a little bit longer just to say, oh no, I'm not, it's not Lorelai, you know, uh, I'm with Nicole. But you mean you mean that Lorelai wasn't around when they decided that they're going to get divorced? Because th- c- correct me if I'm wrong, they're in the process of getting divorced, right? Right, right. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that like she wasn't a part of that decision. Like she couldn't have been blamed, you know, because maybe the townspeople would have blamed her, or it would have been like the gossip that you know it was because of her. I'm now thinking we're going to see more of her, and that this is going to this is going to be a that this is going to be a storyline, that there's going to be something there. So I am wondering, like I've always wondered, if the dream may have actually pushed him to propose in the sense that it shook him and he maybe decided to overcorrect, that, you know, he's not going to pine for this woman because she doesn't want him. So let's move on and it made him like lower inhibitions of saying, eh, let's propose, let's move on, let's go on with the next relationship. Hmm. It's actually why I was asking you, John, if you remember in yesterday, I kept asking you, does it matter that he knows that he's leaving Nicole? Like, for me, I always felt like that was a step too far, that Luke knows that Nicole is more involved in this relationship than him. And that should have been a clue for him to pull back. But I actually think what he did is he pushed him too far. I'm trying to 
trying to wrap my brain around that, around the idea that like some that I have a dream of some of somebody that I'm in love with telling me don't propose, and that would push me to propose. I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine I'm trying to imagine how that would actually play out, and I'm I can't really imagine it. So if you think about it along the lines of like I have a dream I that tells me don't propose, so I'm I when I reflect on it, I realize oh. I'm really hung up on this woman and she's not interested in me. Why am I punishing myself? Yeah, I know. But what I would probably think is, okay, I'm in love with this woman. She's not into me. Um, But the fact that I'm in love with this woman, like clearly means that I'm not in love with this other woman. And in my mind, I would be thinking, sure, I'm probably not going to ever get with Lorelai, but I'd prefer to continue looking for somebody else that makes me feel the way that I feel with Lorelai, rather than propose to this person that I don't feel those feelings for. But he already knew that he wasn't as in love with Nicole before the dream. That's why he was asking Lorelai what he should do. Yeah, I know. That's the reason why like, it, it seems weird to me that he would, that, that he would propose to her. He was questioning even just going on the trip to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just seems very, it just seems very, it seems very weird, you know, and the only way that I can really reconcile it in my own mind is just to think that he got really drunk and, and, and like, you know, just in a drunk and, you know, them just being kind of drunk and laughing and having a good time and all that stuff that it just, in that moment, he just, he just decided to, he just, he just went with it. But it, but if that was the, if that was the case, then I wouldn't imagine that the Lorelei thing at least consciously played a big part of it, maybe subconsciously. I think Lorelai has always been in the back of his head though, because he helped Lorelai with fishing. And then he found out that um, she was really doing it for a date for Alex. And then that kind of pushed him to ask Nicole out, and I think Lorelai has always been the back of his head with this relationship. And I think when he has seen Lorelai date other men and kind of he's in love with her, but it's just the timing's off or she doesn't feel the same way. And so I think that, I don't know, I think he just got swept up in it and he's kind of tired of waiting for her and just kind of like wants to do something with his life and kind of got swept up. Um, but I, I, it's, I think it's interesting that they were separated prior to um, docking. I mean, at that point, it's like you already got married. Like, why wouldn't you at least try it and just try the relationship? So I don't know. I think Lorelai is just will always be in the back of his mind and his heart. I, I would imagine the reason why he wouldn't want to try it is because or they would want to try it is because by the time it sounds like by the time they got off the boat, they were like probably not feeling anything for the other person (laughs) you know like i i'm imagining the way you said it that there's like awkward silences between them you know they're not hanging out they're not being intimate and it's like this is not working You, you can't fake that right no absolutely not And then I think also back to uh, uh, when Rachel was around and there was a conversation between Luke and Lorelai. I was kind of, I'm I'm trying to, I don't really remember the specifics, but I I think it was kind of the same but flipped. Like Lorelai was asking him, like, why aren't you committing to her unless there's some other reason? And he says, there's no other reason. And then this one kind of, you know, he's, asking Lorelai, like, if there's any reason that he shouldn't go on the cruise. And she's like, no, I think he should go. Which feels kind of like a parallel to me. Interesting. I would, I want to go back to the whole, um, the whole Lorelai and Emily and, and all that stuff kind of deal I got the Jimmy Carter reference it took me a minute but I ended up getting it so I never got it what does it mean 
Okay. Yeah, it went over me as well. I wasn't had, it the Iran Contra? Wasn't it yeah. those like people who were held hostage and Jimmy Carter like had to yeah. like mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. work his way like yeah, back channels to get them released? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. So Rory was the movie Argo, and you'll know the Jimmy Carter reference. So yeah. It was it was going to be hard for me to explain. Thank you for doing that. But 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 if I'm correct, Jimmy Carter was unsuccessful, right? Yes, I think so. Well, he was unsuccessful in that he was found out. They did release them, but he was found out what he was doing. He was trying to do it in secret, and it was. Found I see. Out. I see. I see. All that to say is, I'm not really sure how it fits in this episode as much as they mention it, but the Patty Hearst reference is a little bit more apt. And also, um, remember when Rory finds out that uh, she has to go tomorrow for the thing in her college, and Lorelai tells her that like she's trying to convince her to not go to the dinner and John was like oh I I don't like this because I know what you mean like that was pretty ugly from Lorelai but then then you see how uh, Emily can be a little bit of a bitch you know yeah I definitely I definitely my my feelings about the whole thing were subverted by the end of the by the end of the episode, I mean the the. Uh, although I really like that ending where they're they're there watching watching the ballroom and it was actually I found it a little sad because I felt like gosh you know that is what Emily wants you know like she's sitting there she wants to enjoy watching the ballroom with Rory but she can't really because ultimately the way that she the way that she engages Rory about the ballroom will never be like the way that, that Lorelai would engage making fun of it, you know? And so to to me, there's something a little, little, little sad about it, you know, because I, because I just know that, that that's just something that Emily really, really would want. um, And, uh, and not in like any sort of a mean spirited way. Everything that she's doing before that is just ridiculous, you know. All of the, all of that stuff is not, isn't, is just, is just, is just awful. It's Emily at her worst, and certainly I, I felt bad for Lorelai. Yeah, and also one more thing, uh, it's like it, it's like a reminder, or and because with with we we talk, we often have spoken about their relationship, and I suppose we are still going to do because that's part of the whole thing with the Gilmore girls but also it's like a reminder kind of like families you know that you family uh, people in a family they're always like hurt by the other one it's like uh, you cannot avoid that maybe you can have later on a better relationship but it's like always somebody's hurt or like resentful and blah 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 yeah families are always evolving do yeah. you really think that Emily wanted to watch the ballroom dancing with Rory, or was that just a way for her to keep her in the apartment? And, no, I oh, think it was she a way to keep her in the house. No, I think she wanted to. I mean, she's been taping them since 1978 and has never brought them up once in three years, and all of a sudden she that, has to watch. Because I think that there was something else going on there. I, I mean, I know that it was sort of presented as like she's purposefully trying to use Rory against Lorelai, but I don't really, I didn't really see it like that. I saw it as like, and this kind of gets back to our our conversation in in the previous episode um, where Rory makes the deal with them, you know, and, you know, and I was like, well, why does she need to make a deal? And, and, and some others said, well, they know that it's not really a deal. They're just, she's just speaking her language. And I, and I, and I, I think I'm, I'm with, I'm with 
those the whoever said that I, I'm 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 with you on that. Um, and so because of it, I think that Emily is actually really excited about this idea of getting of getting this Rory who wants to be there with her and you know, wants to get to know her and all of these things. So I kind of interpreted it at, at least a bit of it as Emily legitimately excited about this new kind of Friday night dinner that wasn't quite so obligatory. That was a little bit more of, I actually have really enjoyed this time with you. And so I think that pulling out these ballroom dance things that she's been recording all these years it seems like that means that she likes them, that they're important to her, um, and that she would want to share that with Rory. The, 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 I guess the problem, of course, is that, you know, that's not something Rory is all that into, at least not in that context. And Emily would never watch them with her and make fun of them the way that, that Lorelai does. And, and so she would never be able to get that kind of joy from that, um, which to me, that makes, that, that, that makes it a little sad. If, if I view it with that lens, if I view it with the lens that it was just 100% manipulation, all she was doing was keeping her granddaughter there to spite her, her, her daughter, then yeah, I guess you could, but I just didn't see it like that. Sabrina, then Diane, then Lisa. So going with the uh, idea that she wasn't keeping her there and that it was to be friendly, I think it would have been friendly if she'd only made her watch like a couple of them with her to show that excitement. But it seems like Emily always has to make any good thing like a punishment. And so she was punishing. I just I know people, I just know people like that that don't realize that they are just driving you into the ground. They think that their joy of something is your joy, too. And they just are completely unaware of the fact that you're suffering like I just there there are plenty of people in this world that do that I agree with but, that but in most cases with Emily from previous that she does stuff to be nasty and mean yeah, yeah I think we should yeah, yeah. Go into this, this topic because with the with the passing of uh, episodes perhaps you might you might uh feel different, I don't know, because Emily's character have, has so many, like, um, uh, sides to her, starting from the fact that, you know, you know her as a rich, uh, well, rich, wealthy, Lorelai's mom, but then you see some vulnerability that you don't expect, like when we saw her talking to Richard's mom and stuff like that, so she's always presenting us, like, some surprises regarding to her character. So I, I, I think we are going to talk about this later again. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. I always sure. want to say something before mm -hmm. we move on. Well, there was a couple of people flashing before you. It was Diana. No, I know. Um, all right, so why don't we go, uh, why don't we say Diana and then Wendy and then Tasha? Lisa was uh, after Diana, then then Lisa, Wendy, Tasha. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody caught. Um, I I noticed it maybe for the first time this time around, but when Emily goes to put the Eiffel Tower on the mantle, she you know she's now turned away from Rory and Richard, who have gone into the dining room, and she puts that on the mantle. And she looks at the photo of, I think it's Rory and Lorelai, and she is pissed. Like, she is so angry yes. that Lorelai is not there. She is absolutely 100%, like, full of rage. And that is what motivates her to keep Rory there. She does not understand why Lorelai has not deigned to show up. She expected her to. There's th the next frame is the empty seat at the table. It's the, you know, it's the full table and it's the empty seat is right in the middle. We are very much, I think, meant to see that Lorelai, Lorelai messed up by not showing up. And of course we know why she didn't. I mean, it really was impossible, 
Um, but that is not how Emily's going to see it. Emily sees it as a, as, as a diss. And she is going to get her back by keeping Rory there as long as possible. I want to respond. I, I want to respond to that, but I'm, I want to let other others speak first. Yes, yeah, so my my point was going to be also that so I am a huge team Emily. Like she always ties for my favorite character of the entire show. But the fact that I don't think she's being oblivious whatsoever in this case. She like. Diane just pointed out what happened, and then when she goes to have the souffle made, she purposely waits until dinner is done, and I think had Lorelai shown up, the extension of the souffle dinner and all of that watching of the videos wouldn't have even been suggested. I think if Emily was envisioning this wonderful night, I don't, I don't think that watching videos after dinner was a part of it if both the girls were going to be there. Oh, so shoot, my mic was was off. Sorry, I was chomping. Um, I agree with that. I actually think that you I think that both can exist. But I'll 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 get to that after Tasha. Uh first oh. Wendy and then Tasha. Well, I, I mean I think the last two people made my point, so I don't really think I need to reiterate it because I agree with both of them and Tasha seems very anxious, so I will just pass it along. Tasha? Uh, I'm not that anxious, but um yeah, I didn't want to say something though. Um Seeing as though I have a couple people in my life exactly like Emily, I kind of know exactly like when they're doing it out of love and they really want to spend some time with you because like I can if I take off the lens of what I of what my feelings are towards Emily and put on the lens of um, Emily wants to see her granddaughter one one last time before she goes up to college and she she'll try any means necessary to be with her then I guess you can say like she's doing it out of love and I can see where um that could be true but at the same time knowing how Emily is and knowing how she can be very sneaky with that I put back on the lens of like she's doing this because Laurel I didn't come to dinner even though she said that I would leave you of your duty and she knows that the agreement is solely with Rory she knew exactly what she was doing. She told Rory to have another piece of chicken to nibble on it, even if she didn't want it. She put the soup, someone already said this, but she put the souffle in and those take 45 minutes to an hour to make, to bake. And she purposely told, um, brought out the VCR, the VHS tapes and said when Laurel asked her, let me take her home. And she said, no. And it's like, um, who's the mom in this situation? Lorelai's the mom. She can take her if she wants to. And I feel like Emily's just very manipulative and Rory's the type of person that doesn't want to cause any problems, even though she did call her grandmother stupid like an episode ago. Um, but I feel like Rory's not the type of person that will just like up and say like, no, I'm leaving. This is my last night with my own mother and I'm going to go type thing. But it was actually at the end when they were just chilling, watching the ballroom dance. Because they did get to watch something together. It may not have been the godfather, but it was something. And they did get to have their, like, biscotti night and things like that. So, I don't know. Emily is just Emily. And I have my own thoughts. And they will differ and change throughout the rest of the series. Um, I'm, I'm going to actually let Regina go. Um. I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna take one more. I wanna. I wanna formulate my thoughts. Oh, um, I I wanted to re. So the reason why I was flashing is because I wanted to revisit the Jimmy Carter reference again. Um, I I had some time to to think on this, and I think when someone was trying to explain it, they uh the situation that the Jimmy Carter reference was referring to. I think they said that it was the Iran Contra scandal but the Iran Contra scandal happened under the Reagan administration um, because of the secret arms deal with Iran and stuff. And then using all of that money to like fund the, um, what, what do they call, uh, the Contras in, in Nicaragua. Um, and then the, the Iran hostage crisis, which happened under Jimmy Carter's um, administration. You're right. Yeah. I meant to say hostage. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> That's all I wanted to point out. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I thought. Well, that's what I thought as well. 
She was um, just saying she was going to be taken hostage for an age by referencing that particular crisis because that was like over a year long. That particular hostage. I, I was I was under the. I mean, I, I, it's like that's just like I was uh, I, I was a little too young to remember the specifics of it. But my what my memory, if you had asked me like just before this, like you know what was that about? I would have I would have said hostages taken by Iran, Iran uh, negotiations under the Carter administration failed. That that's I, I I wouldn't have thought that there was any sort of like things going in secret and whatnot. I remember there was secret stuff going on in the in the Reagan administration. Um, but anyway, get so getting back to to the to that. So here's here I'll start with a with a question, which is. What if Rory had really loved the souffle? Like, what if she was like, oh, my gosh, a souffle. Awesome. Yes, I'll, I'll wait for that. that. That sounds amazing. I would love a souffle. You know, what if she had been like, this is amazing ballroom uh, dancing. Can you show me another one? I'd love to I'd love to see another one. She may oh. have said that if it if she wasn't uh, such a deadline for the next day to be going to school, if she would have said yeah, but- it to her. At another point in time, I think she might have enjoyed watching. No, I'm just. Film. I guess the, the. I'm just saying, like, how would Emily have reacted? You know, I, I, I'm. I'm suggesting that that in a way both can be true, right? That she can be mad at Lorelai and want to sort of do that, or that her actions, let's say, are influenced by her anger towards Lorelai, right? But that rather than like. It's just a small difference in the way that you see Rory in the whole thing, because if it is just simply Lorelai, I'm getting back at Lorelai, then she's using her granddaughter as nothing but a tool. But if it's something like I'm upset with Lorelai and I'm going to have an awesome evening with my granddaughter and I'm going to have these things that I, you know, that that she gets with Lorelai, right? then she may very well have sort of like, she may be pushing her style of a good night on her granddaughter too far um, to, you know, and it can still be, you know, out of spite for Lorelai while still at the same time, not viewing Rory or treating Rory as just like simply a tool that she has no, no real respect for because that that's the part that I that it's hard for me to to sort of come to terms with this idea that she's like oh okay you don't want to come to dinner watch what I'm going to do I'm going to keep my granddaughter here like despite the fact that she needs to be up early I'm going to be a horrible horrible person to my granddaughter I'm not even to treat her as like a person I'm going to treat her as a tool to get you back and I just, it doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me. Whereas I'm mad at you. I'm going to, I'm going to have an awesome night with her too. I'm going to have an amazing night with her. And so what if you're not here? You know, she's going to love it. Oh, she's not loving it. Well, I'll try harder. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Um, that's sort of how I interpret it. But John, do you really think that Rory reacted positively in any way during that night? No, but sometimes I know, but but this is sort of what I mean when I say like sometimes people just don't like when they're when they're so tunneled visioned on what they're trying to get done, they sometimes just don't realize that a person. I mean, the way that she was talking about those da- about those ballroom dancers did not look like somebody who was playing a, a, a playing a role. You know, doing something. She looked like she was legit interested in what she was watching and was really excited to be telling her granddaughter about that. That doesn't strike me as a person who's like doing this like big manipulative game in order to like, you know, shut down her her daughter. That that looks like somebody who is in that moment legit trying to get her granddaughter as excited about this thing as she is excited about it. I actually and think it's not working. Than, it's not working, but you know, yeah. it, it looks like that's what she cares about. I think it was more like where she, with tricks, was sitting there and cutting up her food in little tiny pieces. That's more of the 
vibe that I got from the situation because they've never really gone into that room before. How many meals have they had and how many times has Rory come over and spent the night and they never did that. So I think, I don't know, I, this is one of the moments where I really disliked Emily because, you know, no, having my daughter myself going to college, um, having her last night, I think that was really rotten of her. And I do think she was using her because um, she had many opportunities to share this with her before. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely think that the Lorelei of it inspired her, <laughs> like, for sure. Um, I just I just don't think that was on her mind the whole night was I'm just getting back at Lorelei and I really don't care about this granddaughter. I mean, I think that she was she brought her into that room because things have changed now. She wants to she wants to. Yeah, I mean, I. I for whatever reason, it, it 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 tracks for me this idea that that that's the first time that she's brought her into the room. If what she's trying to do is get some something from from Rory that she thinks that her daughter gets from Rory, I I think it gets back to the core conflict of the show, which is you know these characters kind of don't they don't know how to express themselves in a way that makes sense to another person, right? So I think I think Rory loves her grandmother so much, and of course she's going to stay, and she's not going to complain, and she's just going to endure it. Um, and, and I don't, I think Emily's pissed, but I don't think she is, like, I, I definitely think she is real mad at Lorelai, but, you know, I also agree with you that she absolutely wants to share this with her granddaughter and doesn't really care about the timing because you know it's not really about that she is tunnel visioned but you know I I think it's it's always going to be these characters kind of missing each other and um like not really communicating effectively how much they love each other like they're just all bad at, at telling the other how much they love each other like they're they're just not getting it right and sort of making making things messy in the process yeah and and of course they're they're at their worst when they are pissed right like i don't think that lorelei is at her worst in this episode you know i mean i i was i grumbled a little bit when she's sort of trying to get Laura, uh get rory to to um you know to to uh to not go and all of that but I recognize, I mean, Emily is, is, is terrible in this episode. There's no doubt about it. Um, I just, I just, there's a, and maybe it's just a small distinction, but I just see that there's a difference between, between the entire evening being sort of led by a conscious decision to, to, um, to hurt Lorelai and a general anger towards Lorelai that has her behaving in a really childish manner. I think Emily contains multitudes. I think she can be both at once. I really do. I think she can be really um, manipulative and and snide and also have so much love and want to be loved all at the same time. And I think that's, I don't know, maybe it's Kelly Bishop too, like seems to, she, she absolutely um, uh, exudes all of that all at the same time, all the time. And I, I think that's why I, I, you know, the character is so interesting because, you know, you have this person who's very complicated, super complicated. Jennifer, I, yeah, for Diana. Sure. I agree, Diana. High five. Just wanted to get it in there, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, for, I agree with all sure. that. Um, I had a few scattered thoughts about this that I wanted to share, um, but I. Yeah, I I think that Lorelai centers herself and assumes it's all about her because Lorelai assumes a lot of things are all, all about her a lot of the time. Uh, but I don't think that's all that's going on here. Um, one little detail, a lot of times, you know, we're following the girls to the grandparents' house and we see them like, we see them knock on the door and then Emily opens the door. And then in this one, we see Emily in the house first and you see her like, smelling the flowers and looking genuinely excited. And so, I mean, 
we also see her look at the picture and look really angry. So it's like both these, both of these things coexist. Um, but I do think that's like one little detail that leads us to feel like her, her genuine excitement. And she says, and she says they're here. So it's like, she's expecting both of them and she's excited. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's I, I think it's a really I, I agree with you, Diana. I think it's a very and Jennifer. It's a, it's a really layered, it's a really layered performance. And I guess it's just the reason why I push back a little bit on the idea that it's just this sort of like one note, like I'm going to get back a Lorelai. The only other thing that popped in my head quick about that was the date that she mentioned when she started recording these. Maybe there was a part of Emily's mind that was upset that she never got a last night before college with Lorelai because she had Rory so young. And so she not only missed it on that, she was like, okay, now Lorelai is not going to come here and spend Rory's last night with me and her, you know, I'll, I'll take it and run with it and use it for all it's worth. I like that. That's cool. I am just wanted to pop in and say, I'm bouncing. I'm going to make like Tigger and bounce, um, but I'll be back tomorrow. Possibly. See you, Tasha. Can I talk? Uh, hey, John, can I just let you know, I, I wasn't on the couch in the episode, so I couldn't say this when you guys were discussing it, but you guys were discussing about the different look of the episode. Yes. And I'm sure that season four was the first season in HD, which is why it would have changed the look of the episode. Aha, uh -huh. that, is, that is interesting. But, you know, it was never actually, it was never actually shot in HD, by the way. Like, it was never a shot on video. The, in all of the time that I was on the show, the show was always shot on film. It was always shot. Excuse me. It was always shot on on Super 16. Ooh. Which is, well, it was the first one that was uh, aired in HD. Yeah, that 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 is that is probably true. Yes, and and if you remember, I it, there was a a past event, uh, a past watch where I said that I was like really curious about how they had taped up the monitor. They had taped it up in a way that they had all of these different lines and they were like one line was for like square TV. One was for, you know, for the area outside of it, that would be HD. And that began on this season. I remember it specifically. And it was like, it was scenes that were being shot like in Luke's and, and, uh, and around the corner, like uh, I say around the corner behind where the, the soda shop is that that's where like, what we call video village that's where video village often was um for uh for the um you know the the, the director and, and and cinematographer and stuff so yeah so so yeah that and that was this was the first that you're right this was the first season where that that was happening but what i thought was specifically like very particularly filmic looking as opposed to last season like so like the first two seasons felt rough in terms of the the, the production style they just they, they looked older um and and then season three suddenly looked like it was way more expensive like it just everything looked glossy and shiny and you know and everything just felt very the only way i could describe it is just like very network tv um, As the yesterday show was every uh, everything's cured by money, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But this one, no. This, this one, and, and and this one also shot on you know all of those other ones shot on Super Sixteen, um, and uh, and this one felt like it just felt mature. Like the, the I, that's that's probably the best word that I could I could say to describe the tone. It just felt mature. It felt like a film, like an indie film. Um, you know, the, the backgrounds were all much softer focus, uh, which you can get on the Super, on Super 16. Um, for those of you who are photographers, you understand like what, what, what would be needed in terms of the, the lens type and, the, and, and, you know, focal length and all of that stuff to, to, to do that. But you know, there's a particular style that the show, you know, was adhering to that might not like have them shooting on longer lenses so that they can like, you know, make the background super soft and, 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 and dreamy looking, which is something that we sort of associate with like high, you know, higher end film. Um, and we saw, I think we saw some of that difference also in the, um, 
in the Jess scenes that were in in Venice Beach, that whole thing kind of had, had a different style to it. Um, lens flares, I was seeing like some lens flares in in this episode. That was something that like was kind of a little different. Um, so in general, it was just it just felt different. It felt the tone felt a little different. And I also think it's interesting that this was the first season that Chris Long was a supervising producer and he was a director on the series and they really liked him a lot and they brought him on as a producer and i remember his job was there he was on set always and making sure that like all the rules were being adhered to so that might be part of it i really like it a lot i you know the this I would say of the season premieres, this one was like, was not as exciting as the, the last ones were. Um, maybe that's just because I was like, just really itching for some Yale. And, and it, I sort of, that just sort of got into my head. Uh, but I did really like the tone, just the tone of it in general. It felt like, ooh, things have gotten a little more mature, like the acting. I thought Rory, like as a character, felt a little bit more mature. I felt like her performance felt a little bit more mature. I, don't know. I always feel like episode two is more like a premiere for me. I agree. So episode, more- episode two of this season? Yes. Oh. I always felt like that and was- you will find out why tomorrow. Okay. What what's the general consensus about this particular premiere of like like premiere of, of a season? Well, tomorrow's better. <laughs> do I people like do people good. like love this episode? Because I because no. I do love this episode. And so I mean it's not like I did this that I disliked it. It's just this episode I could really see imagine being one of the episodes that sort of fades for me after a while, like I, that I don't totally remember everything. Doesn't from it. it feel like a filler between last season and what's to come? And it's the only thing yeah. I mean, like the, I mean, it's like most of the episode is about, most of the episode is about is about the characters giving people gifts from their like return from <laughs> from Europe. You know, it it really. I mean, I, I thought that, that was really clever, and 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 uh, and it was and they got some really good bits out of it. But it was just like with so many things that we're waiting for, right? Like, you know, we got all of this anticipation around like Yale and like, you know, just just big stuff that we've been teased, you know, or or this, you know, the thing with like with with Luke and Lorelai in the last season with the with the dream, you know, I come into this season really excited to like get some of that stuff, get some of those answers. And like, you know, most of the episode is like, you know, giving people gifts. <laughs> <laughs> like from oh, we have I, I just okay. wanted because I've been out playing. Like, can you guys hear me? I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't recall like anything but the last 13 minutes of this episode. So You don't recall I, what? That, I don't recall <laughs> anything but the last 13 minutes of this episode. So <laughs> right. I think the theory of it kind of fading. <laughs> I think it's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. Does anybody, does anybody I was at volleyball all night and I missed a watch party, but I watched the episode ahead of time to get ready, so that's what I've been waiting all night to hear how you felt about the whole Luke and Lorelai, like, or not Luke and Lorelai, but the Luke wedding and divorce and all that. But I yeah, I mean, that was, that was the coolest like, part. For me, that was, the, that was the most exciting part. I didn't even really, like, to, like, the, 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 the stuff with, like, Emily and, and, and Lorelai sort of felt like I've seen this before, you know, like, these two just can't get their act, they can't, like, get on the same page, you know, but the Luke, that Luke moment was the only point in the episode where I was like, whoa, okay, slow down, what's going on here? Um, and that was kind of cool. And that was probably the closest thing to, you know, some of that big stuff from the, the season three finale. Um, but it still didn't quite feel like it. It was like, you know, like we sit down on the porch and we have a little conversation, you know, just like, I just felt like there was so much charged energy from that dream, you know, that I'm just like dying for something, you know, it's just for some of that energy to just like explode, you know, and, and, uh, and just become some really big, big, just narrative, narrative fun. Um, And, and then also, I guess it's just like, the thought that Chilton's gone, I just really want to enter that world. I'm like just really itching to enter that world. The, the, well, that the Yale world. 
Well, it was all of it really the only important thing that happened in there is Luke's bomb on Lorelai. <laughs> I disagree with that. I like the Taylor part. One of my favorite parts is yes. like in, the, in the skydiving. I favorite part. Yeah, I mean, the Taylor stuff is very fun. The, the Taylor stuff's very fun. I really like that little moment where he, like, does the Taylor tip. Um, that, that was cute. Um, it was but, more than that, though, because Rory actually stood up for herself, where normally she'd be a pushover, and she'd just become the ice cream queen just for the heck of it, because of that's what was expected of her. And in this episode, we actually got to see her stand up to her for herself, whereas she wouldn't stand up to family members yet, but it's still... It's still progression of her being able to like say what she wants to do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's that that that's cool. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but like it, the, the stuff was that stuff with Taylor was fun, but it, I guess it just it wasn't quite enough. Um, again, I mean, I like I'm saying that like it was a really good episode. I mean, it's not there wasn't like I left as being like you know just like super disappointed i i i I enjoyed i enjoyed the watch i just i just know that that's not one that's going to last with me for a long time tomorrow's Um, episode is one of my favorites it's it's amazing by the way you just reminded me sabrina um i wanted to actually mention what you sent me uh in that that dm which i just thought was really really cool um, and it w- and it just goes back to last season, if you guys don't mind. Um, and then I'm going to actually have to, to jump as well. Um, but we were talking about the, the season. Uh, what was it? The, w- w- the, the Jess, the Jess episode, that was the, the, that wasn't the finale. That was the penultimate, right? That was the one before. Yeah. The one That's that we were all like, that we were all like, um, well, I had a different take on it. I was kind of like, oh, it's cool. It's sort of a refreshing to get out of, you know, of Stars Hollow for a little bit and see a different part of the world and stuff. And then some, there were some folks that were saying like, um, you know, what really like bothered them was, you know, this is the Gilmore Girls. It's not like the Jess story. And, you know, I'm here for their story. Uh, but, um, you know, and so, so, it just felt like it was a completely different show. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But then I, but then I like thought about it a little longer and I was like, well, but wait, hold on a second. Because like, you know, we've also got like the Lane story. I mean, she's not really a Gilmore girl. And, you know, sometimes we go into the Jackson and Suki story and like, you know, they're not Gilmore girls. And so we can like go into other people's world. Why is it that we can't step out of Stars Hollow? And Sabrina wrote me a DM that's I think really cool. And, and, and it totally, put it into perspective for me. And she said, sorry if I'm if I'm afraid, if I'm quoting you on this one, Sabrina. And if I get it wrong, you feel free to to um to correct me. That for her it was always like like th- this story of Gilmore Girls um was always a, a story that could be like you know it's like not that it was, but that it could be a story written from the perspective of a future Rory. That she's almost like writing a story of all the things that happened, you know, as she was growing up. And that even though we're, she's not in a scene with Lane and Dave or Suki and Jackson, that she would, you know, she would, that these stories would end up being a part of her story because she would, through osmosis, either know what was going on or kind of hear it through the grapevine. But that what really didn't sit well with you is that, that particular stuff in Venice would never find her way, it, its way into her story because she wouldn't have any connection to it. Exactly. So Jeff wasn't a chatty person and he wouldn't have gone through all that detail to tell her what had happened in Venice. Yeah. I, I thought that was really cool. I, I wanted to share that with the group. Can I share something with the group? And I like that a lot, Sabrina. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. And it, and it definitely like shifted my whole perspective uh, on how I felt about, about that, um, about those scenes, about the, that, that, that storyline in that episode. And, and I think I'm, I'm there with you. It's, it, it, it's, it's not right. It shouldn't have been there. Hey, Can I hear I'm... something about this episode that I found through my research? Yes. The night that I watched it. Okay. So I was listening to the Gilmore guys episode on this and they cited an entertainment weekly interview with 
Amy Sharon Palladino on this particular subject, on the spinoff for Jess and everything. And I wanted to read her thoughts on this. It's going to be really quick, I, I promise, and then you can bounce like Tigger and go on with the rest of your night. Uh, but she said, uh, and I quote, I had been asked by the studio to spin off Luke. I was like, you're going to take Luke out of Stars Hollow. He's the person, and Lorelai is in, um, Lorelai's in parentheses, but uh, she says he's the person Lorelai is going to be in love with. A year went by, and I knew that Jess was going to have to leave the show because you couldn't keep a kid like that in Stars Hollow. He hated it too much. I always wanted to do a show in Venice because it's not the OC. It's not rich people in pristine white beaches. That's when I said, if you still want a spinoff, I'll do this. And they were like, yeah. Looking back, I don't really feel that they wanted it. I think they wanted to keep Milo happy and in the WC staple of hot boys. Again, that's Amy's from Palladino's comment, not mine. Then it got ugly. The last communication I got was we won't pay for it because it's going to be an outdoor thing and it's too expensive to shoot. I learned a lesson. I'm not sure what it is, but eventually I will. And that is all she had to say about the spinoff. Interesting. That's very interesting. But yeah, I didn't get to share it that night. Yeah, she didn't. Li- <laughs> they had already. Yeah, it sounds like stuff. it sounds like she didn't really enjoy it. Yeah, so that sounds those like she didn't like it. Those are her words, not mine. Um, if she didn't enjoy it, I mean, kind of going back to like what we were talking about early on when you, you all were asking me about like software development and, and building the app, you know, and it's like when people don't love what they're doing, you can feel it, you know, and uh, and if that was sort of like if, if the whole pre- premise of that show was coming around, it was coming out of like Warner Brothers desire to have Milo sort of kept, keep sort of keep him close you know, close and guarded and, and, you know, and, and away from other networks and other shows. And if it was like, you know, if it, if it came out of this, like, well, I'm not going to do that show for you, but I guess I'll do this one instead. You know, I mean, that's just not Gilmore girls, right? Like Gilmore girls clearly like she's like in love with the show and you can feel it in every word that comes out of the characters. And so it's, it's, that's um, really interesting. Hey, Sam, um, no, yeah. Before you end, did you ever watch that movie Argo, Ben Affleck's movie? I did. That's I did. Harder, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, that, that's right. Um. So, a uh, couple things. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get going. Um, oh, there was something that I wanted to, to say. By the way, if I sound sounded a, a little tired t- tonight, um, it's because. I was very tired. I was up very late last night. Um, so I apologize if I was a little dra- draggy today. Um, we are, I'm actually, I wanted to, to share like something new that I'm working on for that I'm working on in the app, but like really more for like the, the, the broader project. I, some of you may know about this already. I, I think maybe um, this is, uh, and Diane, I hope you're okay with me sort of you know, sharing yeah. this at this point, you know, I just feel like we're, we're, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be getting hiatus pretty cool, pretty soon. So it's going to like happen. Um, like we're suddenly going to wake up and be like, wait, it's season four is over now. Um, and so uh, we're talking about some I- new ideas for hiatus week. Obviously we're, we've been collecting, you know, folks are collecting um, ideas for events and, and whatnot. And uh, Diana and I were talking about uh, a introducing a new format, like a new additional format to what we, we have two formats on the app, on the app right now, or within the community, really. I mean, the app just lets you schedule one of two, right? Either a watch party, which is what we do every night here with Gilmore Girls, or a gab session, which is what we've done, you know, when we weren't watching an episode and we just like all gathered to, you know, talk to a guest that we had or just chat about a particular subject. And we have been discussing a new format, a new additional format to it um, that Diana has uh, has dubbed Fast Talks. And I think the best way for me to describe it would be to say it would be our version of TED Talks. Um, We would have, like, people could schedule a Fast Talk event that would essentially be members of the community 
who have um, pitched a talk that they want to do um, short. So they would be like no more than five minutes. Um, and, you know, we'd have maybe a, a, a few of them in one in one uh, fast talk session, maybe like, you know, four or five of them. Right. So the, the, the amount of the actual like collective uh, talks would be about, you know, 25, 30 minutes. And then we would discuss. Is that right, Diana? Did I, did I? Yeah. Um, Do you yeah, want to like, expand a little bit on it? I, I will. I will expand. Um, so the idea came from um, a couple of conversations I was having with some other group members and also just um, my own experience with, um, you know, other, other communities I'm in, like doing a similar version of that um, on, on a bit, a bit of a bigger scale but I thought it would be really fun if we could all give a little bit of thought to, you know, maybe like a thesis statement and, you know, I really want to talk and it could be really silly or it could be really serious. Um, but it would actually give all of us uh, a chance to think about like, what, like, what do I really want to talk about, about this show to really engage more in the fandom. And it could just be a fun time, you know, and really focused. So, right, some um, there's something that I really love about, you know, and a few folks have been saying this lately, like, you know, what makes Remarcus so different is how we dissect a show that for many people wasn't a show that was like heavily dissected, you know, or, you know, not, not to everyone. I mean, fandoms typically do that. They typically like get really into their show and they dissect it, like, you know, take apart the tiniest details of character and setting and all of that stuff. Right. I think that that's what makes a fandom unique. Um, and, uh, and I love that we do that. And I think that there's something really fun about, you know, taking the, you know, the Ted talk format, but applying it to like geekdom, like the applying it to like a fandom to a particular piece of IP that a fandom loves and like giving it, it, almost that kind of seriousness. So when like Diana, um, you know, shared that idea with me, of course, the first thought I had was, well, okay, how would this, how would this, um, like, like, let's say after Gilmore Girls is over, we went in, into another and we did another show or another IP, piece of IP, you know, um, whether it be television or film, like how could that translate? that are we just talking about Gilmore Girls because we've been really dissecting that show um can this you know can this format live outside of that and I think that it can like for example somebody might like you know in the future we might have like a Star Wars community on Remarcus and they're watching Star Wars films and like super into all of that right fast talks for that fandom could be like a talk about like what do all the different colored lightsabers mean? Like, I don't know what they mean. I, I know that they are, there are different ones, but I have to be honest with you. If somebody was like, I'm going to do a five minutes talk on what they all mean. I'd be like, I'm there. I'm, I, I want to know, you know? So I feel like it's that kind of fun, geeky, just like we're, you know, like fans. Cause I, I do believe this, like fans in so many ways are like more knowledgeable than the creators of the IP themselves. They are, that, it's one of the things that I've learned from this project, how much insight I get from you, <laughs> you know, uh, even though I was a member of the show itself. And I just think that this could be a really interesting, just different format from the other three. So. Uh, I remember Regina actually gave a good example of one one night. She sure did. She sure did. And, 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 and <laughs> Remember yeah. me out that there's our first Gilmore Girls fast talk right after she finished. That's yeah. I mean. <laughs> and again, like Thank like you. as Diana said, they can be silly. I mean, they can be like completely like you know they could pick up pick apart like you know just like they could maybe focus on Gypsy you know and like you know who she is and what it, or they could be a little bit more serious and they could be dealing with like you know with like class and status and 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 you know. Uh, diversity, uh, you know, these like uh, m much more um, like much more serious social issues, or they can just be like I said, like as geeky as like what do all of the the different colored lightsabers and Star Wars mean, you know? Um, 
uh, Diana was actually, she, when, when she shared the idea with me, she was talk, telling me, you were telling me about this podcast that you, um, that you're into. Um, and there's something similar to this where like every month or so the person gives like people in the community a chance for them to like, just speak. And sometimes like they just talk about like really serious things. And sometimes it's like really weird, like off the wall stuff, but it's always really interesting and, and, and seems to, um, to spur discussion. And that's ultimately uh, the most valuable part of something like this is would this, w would these like, you know, spur more discussion within the community? Yeah. And I, uh, you know, we had talked to you about um, potentially doing like theme nights too. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for, you know, this hiatus, it would be fun to, to try it and see if it works the first time around. Um, and then, you know, later on, like maybe it's going to be like a theme night, like pitch ideas around something kind of, kind of, you know, general, um, but, you know, just, just have a theme night. Um, so John can make us some really fun mementos. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, well, that will definitely be happening. Um, the way that I'm imagining it is that like, is that the fast talk will be a new format. So when you're doing it, when you're scheduling it, you pick between one of the three and it would be a new format. And if you choose Fast Talks, um, it would schedule the event. And then the host of the event, uh, well, sorry, anyone who's not the host of the event who went to the event page would be able to submit a short like pitch for what they want to, to do, like a paragraph long explanation of what they want to do their talk on. The host of the event, they would see on that same page all of the different submissions of pitches from community members. And they would ultimately pick a small handful of them and they would contact those community members and say, I want you to, to, to speak on that. Um, and, then, and then there would be attribution as well because the, the, the host would choose those people. They would then be connected to the event. So when you went to the event page, you would not just see the host of the event, but you would see who the four speakers are um so that's sort of where my brain is just i'm talking more from like a you know sort of the platform structure because like i said i would want it to you know i would want this this format to apply to any to any fandom and to any ip like could this work with lord of the rings could this work with harry potter could this work with veronica mars you know and i think it can i think that like that you know fandoms like to dissect their beloved their beloved stories in in ways that i think other fans are interested in listening to so everyone should start thinking about what they want to talk about i don't know i, I i'm just like you know curious like does this sound like something that that you folks would be interested in in checking out yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. great all right. Um, oh, you can see it for other shows too, John. I just can imagine lots. Veronica Mars. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I, I, tru I truly do. I truly do want to know what the different colored lightsabers are in Star Wars. I have no idea. Oh, I do too. That'd be fun. <laughs> I feel like uh, no. she should know. She just wrote me a text message with some explanation. She, you'll have to, you'll have to lead one of those when we eventually have a Star Wars space. Um, all right, everybody, I'm, I'm hopping off. It was really great once again. Um, and I will be back again tomorrow for what I hope will be some Yale. Wait and see. Okay. <laughs> or read the title of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, everyone. Thanks for, th thanks for watching with me. Thanks for hosting. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so I literally just walked in the door from volleyball and I missed the entire show and after show discussion. So did I miss anything really good? Mm. Mm. Best well, stuff ever. Because you. you just totally missed out on the best stuff ever. I can't believe it. <laughs> I feel like just we didn't we didn't go very in depth with anything this this time because there wasn't a whole lot. It's just kind of a fluffy episode. And yeah, it's a filler. I love this episode. Like 
it's one of my favorites because there's so much like stuff I love in it. Like Taylor, Taylor, it's like the, the only thing that we window. get between children and you. Yeah, the giant window that Taylor put in the wall and the ice cream queen. I'm obsessed with that whole ice cream queen thing. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, and seeing Kurt do a job very, very well. That was very impressive. I wonder if they didn't, like, put something like that that was a little bit more um, town-focused just because they knew they would be taking the show away from Stars Hollow, you know, so much more than even that children. I mean, it's, it's, she's living there now and her yeah, people will be. Point. That's what I was thinking too. I can't wait till tomorrow. That's one of my like super favorite episodes when she moves in because Top of the big surprise that happens. The mattress? <laughs> no. Move the mattress. I the mattress. <laughs> I mean, hey. I'm like, can you do that? Because I was in a dorm room and I did not take my own mattress. <laughs> I but yeah, the back so, wait, so. I want because I was thinking about this. Like, do mattress toppers not exist like in the early 2000s? Because like when I they almost did to a dorm, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm so confused. Like, why go through all the trouble of buying a new mattress when you could just buy the mattress floor <laughs> Because no, they're no, but. No, no. You can't have the cute stick without it. Yeah. Oh, I, I took my own mattress. I just I got, mean, I got a feather bed topper for mine. I just took my own mattress. And the dorm I lived in, they stored Your it Your dorm for didn't me. have a mattress? Oh, no, there was one there, but I was not willing to use it. So <laughs> I They're took covered mine in off uh, my bed. I I'm a shower and communal showers, I guess. I guess I'm here. <laughs> I guess no. this is it. No. I'll put a sheet on it. No. I bought one. So when is this hiatus week that's coming up? End of season four, but I don't know what day. July, July 3rd through like um, July 3rd through the following weekend or whenever he starts up season five. Okay, so oh. we're getting a head, head start on what we're going to do during that time. I had a feeling it was coming up sooner than that. I was like, wait, we just started season four. Oh, wow. We're going to go through season three that quickly, I guess. I, I yeah. guess. He's, I mean, doing so he's, go, he's doing a bunch of weekend episodes. Yeah. Like a marathon on one of the weekends. The yeah, the point is up now. So you should be able to see all the way to the end of season four now. Yeah, and the point was to end by the second, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Before the holiday. That is correct. It's gonna be a tough week. It is gonna be a that's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> That marathon weekend is going to be tough. I'm already telling my husband, I'm like, um, I'm going to need, like, another speaker, and I'm going to need to be downstairs a lot. <laughs> and he's like, what do you need? Five hours. I'm like, I just, I feel bad because I, my brother's visiting um, with my niece the whole week, so I'll be in and out. Um, so it's, it's going to be a little tough for me personally, but. I'll join when, when I can, but I can't yep. really miss a ton of family time. I work night and weekends, so I miss the most episodes on the weekends because I can't be there. <laughs> yeah, this is my busy time with work. I'm doing Christmas stuff, which sounds absurd, but that's just the way it is. So I'll always like tune in because I can work while I'm listening, but I won't always be able to talk or hang out. Because it's just too crazy. I got to admit, I'm so grateful it's that weekend because that's school's over. So I can leave. Like, I'm back. Leave. I'm back. Sorry? What's uh, up? What's up? Sorry. It's, don't, it's, it's no, still Wednesday. No spoilers. I, there was also one more thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, sorry, I'm so brain fried. Uh, I... Um, I've talked to a variety of, of folks about joining us. So the next um, the next few weeks, um, my hope is that we're going to have some some other members of the cast 
um, coming and, and, and hanging out with us. And I wanted to let oh, you know. Right. Yeah, I want to let you know about that. Um, I'm yay. expecting the 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 living art one to be big. Shelly Cole coming? Uh, Shelly is coming, yes. Um, Do yeah. we need to go so, fund me for So today, so today... I know. I, I, okay, we'll start that. I, it, it's not really, it's not realistic. It's a very funny idea. It's a very funny idea. And I, you know, I think that I like a Kickstarter could be in the cards for the project at some point, like, but that, I, I mean, he's on tour. I just don't, I just don't really see it happening. And also, yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, Todd, Keiko. Nice. Myself, oh, yeah. my, myself, me as well. Oh, 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 oh my God, Dr. Brown! And we'll put, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll all do our best, our best, um, Sebastian Bach impersonation. So he'll be there in spirit. Oh, uh, yeah. And contact that Ted, cool. uh, same Ted Rooney. Is it Rooney? Yeah, yeah, Ted Rooney. I haven't contacted him. But he did. Because he doesn't do inter- nobody asks him to do interviews. So I think yeah, yeah, I know. He has actually watched some of the shows. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's mostly just like how easy it is for me to contact people. So I, I I contacted the folks that are that are the easiest and most direct for me. So like Nick Holmes is in, Shelly is in, yeah. Todd is in, Kago is in, um, Sean is in, um, and uh, and uh, Biff is in. Yes. Um, Mike, Mike, is, Mike, it seems Mike's in. He got my message, and then I guess thought to tonight that I meant like come hang out with us tonight, which I'm very happy that he did. But but I I hope he comes for an episode that he's actually in. That way he can he can feel a little bit more comfortable speaking with us. Um, and uh, and then I have you know I have I have pings out to George Bell, Kevin Porter, um, Alan. Um, oh, Stan Zimmerman's coming. He's going to be here with us um, for his, both of his episodes. Um, and uh, my sister is going to come for That's her who ep- I was going to ask about. Yeah, my, si- yeah, my sister's going to come for her episode um, for the Pulp, Pulp Friction one. That one will be big also. That'll be Stan. That'll be her. That'll be um, that will be out. I mean, well, I don't know. Alan hasn't gotten back to me yet, but I heard that he wants to, that, that he told somebody that he, he'd be into coming. Um, Nick will be there. So there'll be a bunch. Yeah. Of Alan people. said he would. Yeah. So, so anyway, I just, I, that was just something that I, I, I wanted to mention. It's like actually what I've been working on all, all day today. Like, you know, I, I've, I usually am just like focused on, on the app. And today I was like, I got to, I got to actually like sit down and like start writing people like little DMs and, and, you know, telling them about it and whatnot. And, and I got like five, you know, five folks that, 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 that texted back today um, saying that they would love to. So, um, you know, just to let, let you know the the next, uh, you know, this season, you know, because I specifically was focused on this season, which is really like two and a half weeks. I mean, we're going to be done with the season in like two and a half weeks. Um, uh, is going to be fun. So, John, are you going to put them in the app, or is it going to be like the last minute, like Keiko, or are you going to have them in the app, like Sean? Um, I don't know yet. I might do a little bit of a mix. I might do a little bit of a mix. Um, you know, just to sort of like, just to sort of keep things. I mean, just to just to keep some surprises in there. You know, um, I, I I think surprises are fun, but. At the same time, I also want to make sure that, you know, that folks who, for example, didn't know Keiko was coming, like that, that, that they get a chance to, to clear their schedule and, and, and make it this way. And so wants, I, wants to behave too, right? Yeah, yeah. I missed that one because no. I was... <laughs> no, you, you, you all, you, you're, you're all great at this. This is your format. You know, we found this together and, and this is, um, this is, this is awesome. And, and, um, I have no worries at all about that. Uh, yes, a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, uh, and spread the word to to anyone who you think might be into all of this, especially um, this season, because I have a feeling it's going to be a really fun, fun couple of weeks. 
Thanks for doing that, John. That's great, John. Thank you. Yep. Um, all right. I'm off. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Bye again. Bye. 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 Bye.